Thank you. So in this session, you're allowed to play with your phones. You can go to polliv.com slash annikanoodbull128, and there's going to be a live poll that we're having doing, during this talk. So for once, you're allowed to play with your phones. Uh, so yeah, talking about uh, analytics function, in this case, it actually covers data BI and data science. I just used the general word analytics. So let's get going. This is a live poll. Do you think that other people in the room have better data and data science than you do? And please vote yes or no. It should be uh, updating itself live once you, we get answers in. It should be updating. Yes, here we go. Let's have a battle. Okay, so 80% think that others are better than you are. That's interesting. That's statistically impossible. You know that. <laughs> we have quite many answers coming in. Good. I won't wait for... Oh, oh. Oh, oh, wow. I won't spend all of my time watching this fun thing here, but uh, the end result is that most people think that other people are better than they are. Let's go forward. Uh, so, this story is, is fairly short in the way that I started half a year at this company. So, we're the National Railway of Finland, we start transport people and stuff and been there forever and we have a lot of data. Uh, then, uh, I started there as a head of data and analytics. Uh, there was no team or my role didn't exist before either. So, I started there, I had to recruit a team, do the strategy and everything. And I started thinking, what do we need to do? So. One thing we need to do is solve operative intelligence things. So uh, we have to help resource planning uh, and shift planning and other operative services. So we're steering the shifts of uh, hundreds of conductors, for instance. Uh, then we have lots of custom intelligence use cases. We want to do personalized content uh, product. We want to use uh, uh, advanced analytics for pricing. Uh, we want to increase customer loyalty. Uh, help, uh, corporate, travel, and so forth. But the architecture was like this. So we had, like, uh, what was cool 10 years ago, we had uh, Informatica, SQL Server, and Cognos. Oh, yeah, data lag, 36 hours, concurrency issues. Actually, when I started, they told me not to use the database. And I was like, hey, I'm the head of data and analytics. What, what do you think I'm here to do? Uh, then uh, Cognos is very heavy to use. Uh, the data isn't really consolidated or enriched. It's just what it is when it comes in. And we're, we didn't really have semi-structured data. So something needs to be done. But I first want to know what your data problems currently are. Now the poll is live. You should be able to answer that. Lots of problems. Consolidation is leading. It's very interesting. Data science and consolidation seem to be the hot topics. Yeah, hmm, that's good. I won't wait for that. Uh, you can still put answers in, but uh, this is not like a Formula One studio watching bar plots live. Uh, so let's go forward. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I realized, okay, I have to uh, build a lean team and very quickly. This is there's a big gap between the capability and what, what we have, what we need to do. And then I started thinking, okay, what sort of a team do I need? So the value chain usually goes from data reporting, high cast, forecast, auto, and ideally we want to do automatic decision making. Unfortunately, the workload goes opposite, and we don't want to build just spend here a year and another year here and so forth, but we want to start building it throughout the whole pipeline. And for this, then I uh, started recruiting people. Uh, to serve the whole set, we would need a, tar a data architect, engineer, be a developer, data analyst, and data scientist. But to keep it lean, I recruited every second. So only the architect, the BI, and data scientist person. And, we, and then outsourced some. And with that, we can cover the whole sort of uh, value chain. But now I want to ask you, who would you not outsource? So who is most important to you? And let's see who's thrown out. 
<laughs> data scientists are kept in. You like data scientists a lot, it seems. Data architects. Ooh. It may, may, might also uh, be related to the fact that we're in the data management stage, actually, that you like the data architects most. I think we're uh, getting a fairly uh, good result here already. So data architects and data scientists are really popular people. Let's go forward. Uh, so to keep this lean, uh, we started planning a new type of an architecture. So here we have uh, our myriad of data sources. We luckily have our new sales system and seat reservation system in AWS. And then our app backend is in AWS too. Then we have clickstream data from VR data FI and app in Google. And then we have uh, CRM in Azure. And then we have different customer uh, feedbacks and so forth. And what we started doing is building this data and analytics platform. We actually started that a bit over oh, two and a half months ago. So very, very fresh. Uh, and with that, then we're pushing, we were collecting all the data together and refining it. Not only collecting data, but using data science to make it smarter. And then we're pushing the data to the business via BI tools and then via APIs as personalized content and to operative systems that uh, need, and later on, the customer service. And to keep it lean, we want to build it, we wanted to build it so that each part can be taken out and the thing doesn't collapse. So what we did is we started building in AWS, but then we used open source tools for the da data pipeline and data science and so forth, and then chose Power BI as the BI tool, although we're in AWS. But then we had a hole here for the warehouse. Uh, what, what to do with that? So I decided to write to Santa, because this was, uh, I think it was October, November. So I wrote a letter to Santa, uh, hoping to get uh, a data warehouse that would solve all of my problems. But actually, instead of Santa, I bumped into this guy. And I literally bumped into him uh, on the streets of Helsinki, although he's Swedish. Uh, we were going to the same, same event, but the door was still closed. So we st started chatting on, on the street, and I started, I figured out, okay, he's, he's doing some data warehousing stuff, and then he yeah, really tested his pit, uh, pitch. You know, I, I was there with my, uh, my uh, letter to Santa asking him questions. Can you do this? Can you do this? And so forth. So it seemed that, uh, yeah, he, he could do that. Well, not he, but the uh, company could do that. So uh, the company slowly started finding its way in my heart. Uh, so the first thing was that was on my uh, Santa list was that the warehouse needs to be sca scalable and there shouldn't be any concurrency issues. So with Snowflake, the storage and computer separated, which means that uh, uh, we can have separate virtual warehouses. So the uh, data is actually in S3 buckets, but then w we have virtual warehouses that, that are EC2 instances that wake up when we query the data. And what we do is now we have different warehouses up for different usage. So we have completely different uh, needs of, for data science compared to like streaming data pipelines, for instance. And it's very cheap to store the data, so we can get all data in. But it doesn't mean that we're hoarding data, because data hoarding is bad. Uh, and these virtual warehouses can be of different size. So here's an example how we're running it now. Uh, so here's time of day and then the compute resources. So we have a batch happening in the morning, which consumes quite a lot. So that's uh, actually, the, there's something wrong with the Beamer anyway. Uh, in the morning, we have a legacy data batch that consumes quite a lot. Then we have uh, some business users that come to work at 7 o'clock in the morning and want to know how sales are going. So they need their own virtual warehouse. But then we have a data scientist who can then come and need a lot of resources, but not continuously. And then the BI users would continue their work after lunch. Uh, whereas the streaming data pipeline, which actually you can't see due to the Beamer, it would be running the small one uh, all through the day. And with this, we then can put costs down, because we don't have a big uh, warehouse running 24-7. And another thing that was on my Christmas wish list was that we have a semi-structured data problem. So we have clickstream data from VR.fi, and we wanted to use that. And uh, in Snowflake, you can actually load semi-structured data in. It, it eats JSONs, and it doesn't you know, start crying because of that. So we could dump uh, our, all of our clickstream data in, 
And that was way easier than using, let's say, Redshift or something, where you would have to use weeks and weeks to figure out the structure of the JSON and force it into a uh, structured way. So how it, the JSONs are there, but then you can actually query them with SQL. And that was uh, one, of, one of the things uh, in my Christmas wish list that it has to, the warehouse has to be so that we can uh, use SQL because that's what probably 10 million plus people on Earth know. Uh, so we wanted to use SQL. So even though there's structured and semi-structured data mixed, we can still use SQL to get it out. So we have a lake house. This is actually a picture from our summer cottage, Mökki in Finnish, uh, because uh, because Snowflake can take all sorts of data in, we didn't need to build a data lake and a warehouse, but we could do it together and uh, saved uh, basically money and time in that and kept the architecture simple, which means it's easier to manage. That, hence why the lake house meaning uh, name for that. And another thing on the Christmas list was connectivity. So, because we had these other architectural components uh, going on, uh, we we needed something that works with everything and uh, we can be uh, make sure that we're not locked in uh, with any vendors. So uh, with Snowflake, there is a direct query to Power BI and uh, that means that we can really democratize data. Uh, often there's this problem that you make a really cool data pipeline, but then when it comes to people actually using the data, then you're like, oh, well, we got this 1,000 euro license. We're not giving it to you, but this guy can make PDFs for you, okay? And that's not good. So we wanted a uh, BI tool where, we, where it's uh, so cost efficient that we can just give it to hundreds of people, uh, but then we needed a warehouse on the back that could actually handle that. So with that, we uh, solved the last mile pr problem. And then we, of course, have all the data science work. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, we're using Python there, and we need to connect to the warehouse and so forth. Well, we can connect to other, other ones, too. This is just some, some examples. And then management. Because I was building a new team, I didn't want to uh, use my limited resources on recruiting a DBA, for instance all respect to those who are DBAs. Uh, so so uh, uh, then, because uh, uh, Snowflake is uh, software as a service, or well, data warehouse as a service, so that means we don't need to uh, install software and update that, and we don't need to have the infrastructure do uh, partitions and indices and so forth, but we could just concentrate on taking, bringing the value out of the data. And security is also thought uh, about already, so we are in our data and analytics platform. We build that in AWS, and uh, the and it's in Ireland. And Snowflake also uh, is also in Ireland, but elsewhere too. So we have our v between our VPC and theirs. We have direct connect, so we don't have to be concerned about the traffic either. That's very important for us. Of course, it's encrypting data and so forth too. So back to my Santa list. What was on my Santa list? We I got everything from uh, the Snowflake, uh, except uh, it doesn't, uh, Snowflake doesn't work as an API backend. We tested how fast we got to 300 milliseconds, but we need like 50 milliseconds, so we have to do a separate pipeline for that, but that's, that's okay. And master data management, it doesn't, it's not like a master data management system where you can write in data or something like that. But I got very, very much of my uh, Christmas wish list, so that was very good. So that's why, why we went for Snowflake, but now I want to know what you are using. And I'm not paid by any of these, by the way, if somebody's thinking. This is a neutral <laughs> questionnaire. Oracle seems very... And other, I clearly forgot to mention some databases on my list if other is so big. Okay, there's a lot of sort of old on-prem type of 
databases. Of course, you can forklift them into cloud, but that's very, very interesting. We'll go anyway uh, forward. So to wrap up, uh, so what we had, I, I started a half a year ago at VR, recruited a team, did a data strategy, uh, found, uh, came up with what use cases we have, what we're supposed to do. Uh, then we decided to go to, for AWS. Uh, then we found out the BI tool we want to use. And then we figured out, okay, we want to use open source tools because uh, so that we don't have a vendor lock, but we have a really independent architecture uh, where we can change any component. And then at the heart of it all, we have found Snowflake, which enabled this architecture to happen because uh, it could uh, work in sort of connected to our AWS data platform, but then use a Azure BI tool. And then we found a vendor to come and help us build it all. And then we're using agile development like everybody nowadays, of course. So with this puzzle uh, currently, so we started building data analytics platform two and a half months ago. We have our first uh, production onboarding uh, well, tomorrow they're planning it, but it'll be then later next week uh, for other stuff. And uh, so the current situation with those uh, use cases is that we have been able to do some data science already helping pricing uh, and corporate travel. And we've done work to help the loyalty program development. We managed to do customer 360 uh, profile prototype and uh, we managed to help our conductor shift planning by giving them data to plan uh, people wh where we need more people on which trains and so forth. So this was a very intensive half a year in my life working there. <laughs> and there should be now time for three minutes for actual questions. Thank you very much.